Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today is Sunday Sew Along and I have a interim tutorial for you. Um, today was supposed to be day one of the Teddy Designer Top Sew Along but life happened last week so <laughs> I've got a tutorial instead and we will start the sew along next week. Um, so if you watched my channel on Friday, you know that the glissando pants, shorts, and skirt were the um, feature Friday pattern for Love Notions. It was $5 just last Friday, um, the Friday we just had, and I have been adapting them to fit my expanding fluctuating waistline. Um, I've got autoimmune issues, and I know I'm not alone, menopause, all sorts of things that can cause wildly fluctuating waistlines. So um, I thought I would do a little tutorial and show you how I adjusted the glissandos to fit me <laughs> properly. Okay, so this pant is, it sits at your natural waist. Um, it has uh, pockets, it has a full belly piece. Such a game changer. You need this pattern for anything else, just for that full belly piece, just to try it out and see how wonderful it is. It's, yeah, it's just wonderful. Um, it comes with a button fly. I actually sewed a zip fly on mine, um, and actually I'll leave a link um, down below. Um, I'm over, I was over on the Love Notions page, um, their YouTube channel, showing you how to convert the button fly to a zipper fly. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go have a look. But um, today I'm just gonna show you very simply, it is not hard, how I did the elastic. Um, basically I have omitted all of the um, darts that are included in the pattern to give me enough room for my waist. I've cut a straight size 10 of this pattern, which is my for my hip measurement. That matches, my hips are like 39 and a half right now. Um, that was for a 40 inch hip. So I think the size 10 is for a 40 inch hip. So I went with the size 10, the whole pattern, um, except the waistband, I cut actually a 16, which is really what I needed for my waist, and um, lengthened it even a little bit more, mostly because you need just a little bit of extra length when you do a zip fly than when you do the button fly. But um, yeah, I uh, just needed the excess for the waistband. I like to have, it's much easier to cut off excess at the end than it is to not have enough, obviously. But yeah, you could definitely still sew a little bit of dart in here if you want. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, maybe taking less of a dart in um, just to get a little bit more shaping. But yeah, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> I just omitted all of it. Um, I'm very straight through my hips and waist. So um, yeah, decided just to omit it and let the elastic do the heavy lifting when it comes to shaping. So yes, those are my glissando shorts. Um, I will show some footage of me actually in them so that you can see what they look like. But yeah, I'm just gonna show you how I put the elastic into the back. It's pretty straightforward and easy, but I know some people like to are visual and like to actually see it happening um, without me talking you through it. So without further ado, I will head over and show you how I put the elastic in. Um, don't forget, um, if you do like this content, if you'd like to see more of it, I do have a coffee account, which is in virtual tip jar. Um, it just all that money goes right back into the channel for supplies, equipment, um, everything to help make the sew-alongs and the tutorials the very best that they can be. So I like to just put that little reminder in on these um, if you're interested. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I have for today. I will be back next week with the sew-along for the, the Style Arc Teddy Designer Top, um, and then I'm back on Tuesday with another exciting video. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Got a lot of fun things going on. All right, guys, have a good one, and I will see you next time. Bye. Okay, so we're gonna put, we're gonna make these glissandos um, waist fluctuating friendly. <laughs> All right, so what I've got here are, um, my, I've got shorts here actually, but this would work for the skirt, the pants, everything. Um, I've done it to the pants. I've not yet made a skirt, but I hope to here real soon. Um, so I've done everything, finished everything off. I put a fly zip in this one. The pattern actually calls for a button zip or a button fly, but this doesn't um, affect anything. Um, for this part. Okay, so what I've done, I've got my pants done, the waistband is done, except I've not sewn the facing down yet. So obviously I just have that pinned. I like to just finish my inside facing with bias tape because then I'm sure to catch everything when I do my top stitching on the right side. So I've got that. Um, that's the point where I am with this. I've not sewn, this facing is completely free right now. And then I've got um, some inch and a wide, inch and a half wide elastic. This is an inch and a half wide waistband. 
Um, so I've got inch and a half wide knitted elastic. It's just a little thinner than um, like the, the no roll and that kind of thing. And it's my favorite. So that's what I've got. And I have measured the, um, and by measured, I mean, I literally unrolled my elastic and went from um, the seam here, the side seam to side seam. Uh, and then I subtracted two inches. I think, feel like that's a really good place to start. We will be adjusting that though to make sure it's comfortable. Now, I have not sewn the darts in the back of this. I'm going to be getting all of my shaping from my elastic, but you could definitely sew a little bit of a dart if you want a little bit of shaping and maybe a little less with the elastic. So that's an option. Like you could just reduce your darts. But that is how I am getting um, the size that I need in my hips and then having the fluctuating waistline because these do hit at the natural waist. And then I have a oh so fancy safety pin for threading my elastic. All right, so I'm gonna set the safety pin and the elastic off to the side here. And what we are going to do is um, we are going to sew, and I'm gonna sew from the um, top side because I'm top stitching, but I'm gonna sew, um, I'm going to flip these inside out so it's easier to have them against the feed dogs. I'm gonna, I want my facing against the feed dogs. But I'm going to sew from here and um, actually I'll start on the other side. But, you know, we'll start from here and I'm going to stop about an inch and a half, two inches away from my side seam and then back stitch. And then I'm going to start just a little bit inside this side seam and then sew all the way around the back. Stop again at this side seam leave about inch and a half, two inches, and then start again sewing um, to the other end of the waistband. So I'll be leaving two holes because we're gonna be sewing this into our um, side seams. Okay. So let's get started. I'm gonna pan that out a little. All right, so I'm gonna turn these, uh-oh, losing pins. I really find that I need the pens more for the pressing everything into place than I do the actual sewing. But I'm turning my shorts inside out just because I like to sew with my um, the facing against the feed dogs. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just going to start here. Um, you can definitely top stitch the top if you'd like as well to make it a little, I mean, it's just up to you if you want to do that. If you do want to do that, I would sew that first. Um, I'm just going to be top stitching along the bottom. That's just what I'm going for with this pair. But yeah, if you do want to top stitch across the top, um, go ahead and do that now. Um, and I would start, I mean, you can start wherever you want to start. But yeah, I would go all the way around before we feed any elastic in. All right, and I've got metal teeth, metal toothed, metal teeth zipper. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to be very careful about hand cranking that over so I don't break a needle. Okay, all right. And now I'm just gonna pull my pins out as I go. Put my pins over here maybe. All right, now I'm getting close to, here's my side seam, so I'm gonna go just a wee bit further, and I'm gonna back stitch, and then we're gonna skip, I have a pin in here, I know I do, yeah I do. We're gonna skip to the other side of the um, seam allowance here, and sew across the back. Stitch, and 
then skip again, inch and a half, two inches, somewhere around there. Just enough to give yourself some room. And as I come upon the teeth, I'm just gonna crank that. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way around just so you can see what that looks like. So we're just gonna turn the corner. Now I'm just gonna sew all the way back. I really like this um, type of finish when I have button loops, button loops, belt loops, <laughs> which I am not going to put on this pair. where I started. All right. Okay, so we have two gaps here um, where we're going to be feeding the elastic in. So let me um, set up my tripod here differently and um, pull out the rest of these pins and I'll come back and I'm going to show you how to do the elastic. Okay, so now that we've got that all um, sewn down, I've got my um, elastic and I've attached my safety pin into one end and it does not matter which side we start at here. But I've got, um, this is the one hole I've left here, and um, I'm just going to start feeding this through my back waistband. The old safety pin. It's the <laughs> now you want to make sure that this is staying flat, that it's not getting twisted. The other thing I really like about knitted elastic, which is what I'm using, is that if you need to, you can trim it down because it's got these little, um, see those kind of those little ridges? Let's see, it's easier to see on that side. You can cut in between those ridges and cut knitted elastic down and it won't, um, it doesn't lose its integrity. It doesn't um, unravel or fray like the braided or not, you know, the non-roll stuff does. It's my favorite. All right, so we're just going all the way through the back here. Now I know that I'm gonna need to adjust this a little bit because that's just kind of what I'm expecting, but that's okay, be careful. You don't wanna suck too much of your <laughs> elastic in here. Okay, so now I've made it to the other hole very carefully. Pull that through. It's very bunchy here, but that's okay. Okay. So very carefully pull that through. And I'm actually going to sew this side first. So I want to um, make sure that this elastic, make sure that nothing is twisted. Um, and you can go over at this end just to make sure you don't accidentally pull that through anymore. And I'm just going to pin through the shorts and through the elastic at that point. I have a pretty large tail there, there, but that's okay. All right. So at this end, what I'm going to do is I want about, I don't know, half of an inch, three quarters of an inch past the seam line. Okay. So it's you know, right up under, under there. And I'm just going to stitch in the ditch um, from the right side, um, right here in this seam line to secure that. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. And again, I'm going from the right side. It's just a straight stitch. Okay, so 
that's anchored there. And now while I'm here, I'm just going to, and before we get things like super bunched, <laughs> I'm just going to start where I um, stopped and connect my line here at the bottom to finish sewing that facing down. Okay. All right. So now we're super bunchy over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and um, just kind of smooth this out a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go try this on and I'm going to adjust and pull this tighter if I need to. So I'm going to put them on, keep, you know, unpinning and repinning and keep adjusting until this is a nice tightness that I really like. So I'm going to go do that real quick and then I'll come back and show you where we've ended up.